All right, guys, so I ran for the city council in Austin, Texas in 2014, and we caught Travis County corrupting my election with electronic voting machines. Who in here loves electronic voting machines? With no paper backup. Yeah, well, nobody. Depends on which side you're on. Depends on which side, that's right. That's depends right. on whether you can get into the system. That's right. How, yeah. This is when you're the last hack. Right? <laughs> Don't be the first one, be the last one. So, I got up the next morning, supposedly my 24 year old. The Democrats moved him into my district in the, uh, the Runberg area, which is one of the poorest districts in Austin. We have a lot of guns there because the police just can't get there on time. So, it's a conservative area. So the Democrats moves in an ultra-liberal guy into my district two weeks before the deadline for anyone to move in there. And somehow he beats me two to one on election night, and there's no way on earth. He was new to Austin, new to the district, 24 years old. And I'm okay with people being young, but um, a lot of issues with him as a candidate. So I knew the results were wrong. So I got up the next morning, licked my wounds, and read the election code from top to bottom, over 200 chapters. And I was looking for one thing. What are the backup records for electronic voting in the state of Texas? How many here have been candidates or your candidate now? Right? We worry about kissing babies, block walking, and phone banking, and raising money for campaign signs. Have we ever read the election code to know what the laws are for electronic voting? We have over 200 counties in Texas that only use electronic voting with no paper backup. And that's about to change because of our case. So I got up in the next morning, looked at the data, and it didn't make sense. And I'm going to show, who here likes math? Anybody like math? Oh, yeah. oh, I'm, 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 it is a, it's God's language. If you believe in God, and I do, it's God's language. So I got up the next morning and did a, and a you know, my background is computer technology. I have four patents in computer technology. I worked as an engineering manager in the semiconductor industry for so for two, almost two decades. So I know how to use an Excel spreadsheet. I know how to analyze data. So I started looking at some data. What I'm going to show you is shocking. You just said that you don't know, when people come in things. What I'm going to show you, you're going to, you're going to really understand that there was a problem with the election. Let's start out. Okay, so here's some statistical analysis. In my election, it was 18 precincts, just a little city council race. I never thought there would be corruption in a little city council race, but who knew? So I looked at, this was early voting discrepancies. You know how campaigns get early voting lists of people that vote, and you get them off your rolls, so you don't worry about block walking and phone banking? So we had those lists. So I looked at every precinct, and I looked at the number of ballots that were counted in our recount, we did a manual recount, and I looked at the name of the voters that the county had given us, and guess what? There were more ballots than names that voted. In almost every precinct. Wow, guys, that's a fingerprint of a hack. It's not just one or two election judges who just aren't with the program. There's an issue there. Almost every single precinct was off except one. Precinct didn't have the fewest voters. That one looked okay. Everything else was off. So that was the first thing to me that said something's wrong here. So I did a really strong statistical analysis. Anybody heard the 80 20 rule? We focus on the 80% where the big hitters are and ignore the 20. So I looked at the precincts where 80% of the voters voted. And I ignored those other precincts. There's about half of them, 80% of the voters voted. There was a general election between me and these candidates in November, and then a runoff in December. There were eight candidates in the general. So I looked at my votes and my future opponents' votes only and did a percent. This is a little unique way to look at it. Okay? So I was looking at different, you gotta find a panel. There's a hack, there's always a panel. So I got my percentages for these. 80% of where the voters voted, and then there was the runoff, it was just he and I, and my percentage. What I noticed was really unnerving. Three precincts stayed exactly the same number, and half the people had treated out, over half, and new voters, some new voters voted. That was surprising to me, three precincts stayed the same. Then I noticed some precincts went up 3%, some 
went down 3%. So it looks like it's being targeted. So have a statistician say, Laura, on an x-axis, plot what you've got in the general, and on a y-axis, what you've got on the runoff. And do this for other candidates or a lot of runoffs in that election. So I did that. The United Order, so I apologize. Uh, this was another district, and I plotted their election, general by the X, runoff by Y, and you see a scatter plot. Mine is a straight line. The R squared of 0.98. Other candidates, scatter plots. No straight line, except mine. R squared of 0.98. That's high school algebra. It says this is correlated to that. My election was targeted by person. And the guy who programmed it or the woman that programmed it didn't change the program depending on the runoff of the general. And that's how I got it. They were a little sloppy in their programming. I was an engineer for almost 18 years. I would shut down a billion dollar semiconductor factory on data less correlated than that. So I knew what I was looking at. Most of the candidates probably wouldn't catch it or wouldn't know how to even find it. But I'll tell you one thing, guys. I do a lot of prayer. And what came to me was looking at it this way. So this proved to me there was a program. I didn't know who did it, how it happened, but I knew there was evidence of it. Any questions about that? Any disagreement? I'll tell you one thing, I've done this presentation in front of a room full of Exxon engineers, ex-engineers that are retired. And when I show this graph, they laugh. They go, oh yeah, you're right, Dr. Presley. This was stolen. And we knew it. We just didn't know how. So all I'm going to show you is how it's being done across the state of Texas. Because i tell you one thing, guys, we give a lot of money to candidates. As candidates, we run, and this stuff is going on in the background. What should we do when the election can be stolen the last couple of hours on election night? After all the work we've done as, cam as, cam as candidates, right? But I'll tell you what, we have a lot of power. I'm going to show you where we are, where we were in 14, and where we are now with election integrity. Okay, most counties, there's 200 counties in the state that use electronic voting with no paper backup. I mean, it's almost shocking. Over 100 counties use this system, the Hard Inner Civic System, which is the one Travis County uses. Do y'all use, you know if McClendon uses part, uh, a touch screen or it's a little wheel? It's a little wheel. Alright, that's hard. this. It's Hard Inner Civic. The wheel is hard, the touch screen is called ESNS, and they both have similar issues. So our data is going to be focused on this one, okay? Which is most counties use this one. So what happens when you vote on those machines? You ever wonder where your vote goes? When you're on the machine and you pick your choices, the votes go on to a memory card at the precinct, at the polling location. It's a little card that's about the size of a credit card. Old school, it's Windows 2000 software, okay? Yeah, shocking, right? Windows 2000, all right? So when your votes go on the memory card, well, where do these memory cards go? They all merge to one computer down at the county office called the Central Accumulator where they put the cards in and tabulate the votes. If you want to steal an election, do you want to be at the precinct where everybody's watching? No. Or do you want to be at the main computer where all the cards are coming to you? You don't have to go to them. And nobody's watching. I'm telling you guys, this is how it's being done around the state, around the country. We're the first candidate in the country that's ever gotten an audit of all the back of the computer where all the dirty business is going on. Okay, I'm going to show you that in a minute. All right, so I read the election code from top to flip and bottom. And I said, well, what are the backup records that have to be there in Texas for electronic voting? Because there's got to be some laws there, right? We're a state, we're a republic, right, of laws. There are four major methods for checks and balancing these electronic voting machines. You have to have ballots numbered for a recount, so you know if you got any extra or you're missing some. You gotta have backup records, these results tapes at the at the precincts when the polls close. You gotta have watchers at the central counting station, and you're supposed to do a partial manual count to audit the election on at least three precincts to make sure the scanning machines are working right. 
Well, guess what? In Texas, we don't do one of these. Not one of the four. And it's shocking. And the Secretary of State's not enforcing any of them. You want to know where the corruption in Texas is coming from? It's coming from the Secretary of State's office, where they're not holding counties accountable to law. If you don't hold them accountable, what do we have? We have chaos. We have illegal elections. We have fraud that can waltz across Texas. If you don't have the back of records. Okay? So we're going to go through each one of these, what the law says, and are we enforcing the law? And what do we as voters and candidates want to power to make sure we follow the law? Okay, let's walk through these. The first one is numbering of ballots. The Texas Constitution requires that every ballot be numbered, just in case you have extras or you're missing some or you've got duplicates, right? That's the most basic of accounting. This was put into the Texas Constitution in 1891. Fraud's been going on a long time in Texas. And they knew the number of ballot even back then. And so what does it say? In all elections by the people, the vote shall be by ballot, and the legislature shall provide for the numbering of tickets. Tickets in 1981 meant ballot. You got a number. The legislature shall provide. Did they do it? He sure did. In 1986, well, this, these laws were a lot older. There was a revision of the election code in 86. In 86, chapter 52, section .062, numbering of ballots is in, the, is in the election code. The ballots prepared by each authority responsible for having the official ballot prepared, which is the county, shall be numbered, the official ballot shall be numbered consecutively beginning with one. Constitution says it, the election code says it. Are we doing it? No, we're not doing it. The only place we're doing it are on absentee ballots. Anybody vote on absentee? Absentee ballots are the only legal ballots in the state of Texas. They're numbered right here. So when you turn in an absentee ballot, whether you're over 65, you can be out of the county, or you're, or you're disabled, or a veteran, you, your ballot, paper ballot, is numbered. And this ballot gets scanned on electronic voting. Well, when I read the election code and said, where's the number on my ballots? I, this is a problem. We're just going to figure this out. So let's do a manual recount. In Texas, you can do manual recount on electronic ballots. So, I, so, so we did. We did a recount on the absentee. And guess what? It was exactly tied. 240 to 240. It certainly wasn't 2 to 1. So where did the 2 to 1 come into play? on the electronic voting ballots. And when we tried to recount those, the county pulled me into their office and said, Dr. Presley, we can't give you a ballot recount for those electronic voting votes. But we can give you something else. The Secretary of State says it's just fine. These are cast vote records. I said, what do they look like? He showed me, this is what it looks like. All the electronic voting machines in the state of Texas for the last 15 years have not been able to produce a legal recount ballot for the state from day one. This is what's called a cast vote record. It's a printout. What the computer says, a person voted. <coughs> a person voted. And I'll show this expanded. Do you see a number on that piece of paper? It's not numbered. Actually, it doesn't even have the date of the election on it. I was in the election, my name's not on it. This is not a ballot. It's a data structure file from what the computer said we voted. This is not an original ballot from the machine. And the machine is supposed to keep an original ballot and number it so it's tracked and traced so that there's no extras and there's no um, duplicates. It won't trace back to you with a number. But it's a random number, it's a, it's a sequential number that is secret, keeps the ballot secret. So this is a ride record. record that's been arrived after the elections happened. Pardon? That this looks to me like the ride record that's yes. happened. I'm really glad I wore my t-shirt today so I can identify myself. Close this one. Say it again. Uh, I'm really glad I wore my t-shirt today so I can identify myself, although I wasn't 
infrastructure, not a statistics part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is what's. This is really bad. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And this is sanctioned by the Secretary of State's office. That this is just fine. And we said, stop the presses. We're going to file a lawsuit. We did not meet law. This is not meeting law. Okay. So basically, the absentee ballots, which were exactly tied, and the almost 4,000 CASCO records are not legally equivalent. That's our claim in our lawsuit. We filed an election contest. Because this one's numbered, this one is not. We don't know where this came from. This was a lot, this came from a large PDF document. Anybody know how to use Adobe Acrobat? You move pages in and out? Yeah, if you've got no tracking of it, that could have happened. Okay? It's not a ballot. It's an Adobe Acrobat file that could be modified. Actually, you can change these. You know how you can modify an Adobe Acrobat file? You know, you could just delete this name and put mine or his. It's not a ballot. It's not a secure ballot. This is where we are in Texas, guys, for electronic voting in over 200 counties. Yes, sir. Assuming you'll win your uh, Supreme Court case, what's the fallout going to be? I'm going to get there. <laughs> I'm going to get there. We'll get there in just a minute. Okay? All right. So, can the hard inner civic number a ballot? Actually, it can. So, in our lawsuit, we filed a lawsuit. We said these are not legal. In our lawsuit, we got the manual to these um, voting machine uh, components. There actually is a ballot code that's assigned to the ballot for provisional ballots. So it can, it can assign a number, a unique number. It also can assign a ballot code to every early voting ballot. But guess what? Travis County did not turn the feature on. So, the equipment can do it, but if you number it, you might not be able to steal the election. And how much do you think um, just humans not, so, so, so speaking as can, dealt with my, um, my uh, what do you call it, the, the elections office at the courthouse. Yes, and then, sir, how many of you answers your questions, right? And so, while I don't doubt that there's a really complete <laughs> fraud here based on the graph, how much this could also be just human beings who are not well trained to do their job properly? Do you have a sense on that? Well, you know, you kind of think of the logical way things happen. You know, we follow a lawsuit, we say the ballot should be numbered, it's not being numbered. The Secretary of State should tell counties, should send a, a letter to every county saying, Turn the feature on and let's number a ballot. But that's not the case. So there's your answer. There's your answer. If the Secretary of State believed the ballot should be numbered, they would be numbered. But they're not. There's your answer. My, my position is it's easier for fraud if you don't number. Right? Okay. So we've shown here can do it. And I'm just showing you my ballot was not numbered. So where did this come from? Okay. All right. So that's a numbering issue. We had the Travis County clerk on the witness stand in our case, and we asked her, why aren't you following the law? And she says, well, that's not the final law. We said, what's the final law? She says, well, there's special directives from the Secretary of State's office. And we said, well, what do you mean? And we asked her, do you think the Secretary of State can tell you not to follow state law? And she's, I know they can. This is what we're dealing with. County clerks think the Secretary of State has the authority to tell them to ignore law. And the Secretary of State believes they have that authority too. Because so, they're doing it. So we're not agreeing with the intelligence. I don't like it. Lord. This is this is optional law. It's, a, it's amazing, guys. I mean, when you get it, when we got in, when I got into this, I was just like, I couldn't believe it. Optional law. So, Mr. Ingram, Keith Ingram, is a director of elections who 
is, who is not supporting number ballots following state constitutional law. And we, we respectfully disagree with that. And we're, our process is going through the courts. Yes, sir. Hi. Who's we? What's your current status? How can I join you? I need to talk to you more. Okay, well, let, let, let's, let's finish this Sorry, up. I get, I, I get dramatic. You're, you're very, you're very, you're at the end of the movie. <laughs> you're at the end of the movie. So, the movie's not over. There's more. Stop, stop with the spoilers. There's more. There's more. He's excited to help. He is excited. So, so, our case right now is in the Texas Supreme Court, and we're asking them to weigh in on the ballot numbering issue. We went to the, we went to district court, and uh, we were thrown out for a frivolous lawsuit, and we were sanctioned over $100,000 for a frivolous lawsuit. And we said in the courtroom that they wanted to chill any other candidate from ever challenging these electronic voting machines again. You have that right? We have it in transcript. And so there was a deal on the table from our opponent's lawyer that if we would not pursue an appeal, that they would not pursue the sanctions. And we said we're pursuing the appeal because this has got to stop. Yes, sir. I, I noticed that you've given the, uh, the respondent in the case being the other. The That's other. right. In state law, you have to, you have to sue your opponent in an election contest, and we were in the process of proving that the results cannot be ascertained, and that's when we got thrown out of court, and then we appealed it up. In an election contest, you sue, sue your opponent. Where do you, do you, do you, I just still don't know who the hacker was. Would it have been state, a state of state level, though? Wouldn't that fall on them? If it, if it was a legislative um, race, there's different uh, people who have jurisdiction over that. For the city council, okay. right. it, was a, it was a district judge. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So this is our case in the Texas Supreme Court, and we've got um, three major questions. The ballots have to be numbered. Can the Secretary of State suspend laws? And was this a frivolous case? Do we believe we will prevail on all of these? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you representing yourself pro se because you think it's the best course, or are you representing yourself pro se because you don't have enough money for lawyers? I think it's the best way to do it. Okay. Yes. Hands on. Hands on. I think it's easier, really, um, to do it this way. It is. Okay, so is there, you know, is it just my opinion that the ballot should be numbered? Is it? Oh, it like yeah, I, I can read English <laughs> and, and comprehend, right? But actually, there's even case law back to 1893 through 2011 says ballots have to be numbered in the state of Texas. It's always been the case. And even in 2011, the justices, justice, uh, this was under Supreme Court Justice Jefferson, the E Slate numbers a ballot. Well, it does. Travis County didn't turn it on. And we, we're the first in the country and in the state to document we're not following the law. Okay. All right. So. The Attorney General Ken Paxton on the numbering issue actually supports our position. He, they, their office filed an amicus brief supporting us, and they said, the question of whether unnumbered ballots cast using a DRE machine, electronic machine, may lawfully be considered in a manual recount impacts what voting machines may be approved in Texas and is worthy of the court's review. These lawyers from the AG's office are very concerned that the machine can number and it's not new. So we have the support of the AG office. And those in Travis County, if you vote uh, in the general election, Michael Toff is running for third court of appeals. And I support him. He was one of the co-authors of the brief from the AG. This is very powerful to have the AG supporting this. Okay. So that's a numbering issue. Let's talk about the results takes. Anybody been election judge ever? If you're an election judge, the law says you are to print a tape at the polling location with every candidate's name that's running and the results they got. And the reason you do that is in case 
something goes screwy with the electronic memory card down at the county and there's some problem. You print a tape, judges sign it, and it's a record before the machine leaves the building. Well, guess what? We're not doing that either. <gasps> Here it is in state code, chapter 66, section point 022. Envelope number one, election judge. This is the disposition of records after the election. So when I read the election, I'm going, what are the backup records for this stuff, right? So chapter 66 is the chapter. And it says envelope one, judges, must contain the original election returns. And if you don't turn them in, judges, it's a criminal offense. Here's what happens. When you vote in the voting machine, the electronic data goes on to this, what's called the main controller at the precinct. And there's a memory card in there. And they want you to print the results at the precinct before the memory card goes down to the county and is never seen again. All right, that's the intention. And why do you do that? Because you know the controller gets backed up to a main computer. It could also be backwritten once it goes down to the county. The memory card goes onto the main computer. It could be backwritten once it's down there. So why do you have to print the tape? You want to print the tape before anything touches anything else. That's the integration of the system, how it's supposed to work. Well, guess what? Travis County told the judges, don't print the tape. Don't print the tally. So we don't have that back. We don't have a number. In all caps, yeah. In all caps. We don't have a number, and we don't have a tape. And why do we not have a tape? Well, Mr. Ingram, the Secretary of State's office says, rather than printing the tally tape, at each precinct polling location. Yes. You'll just print an access code report. Well, what's that? Access code report is just the number of people that voted. It's not the tallying up of what they voted. Holy flippin' moly. No tape. And the Secretary of State is telling them, don't worry about it. Don't do it. Remember, it's a criminal offense not to turn it in. So actually, Secretary of State appears to be telling judges and counties to commit a criminal offense. Did this go out to all the counties or just Travis County? Every Hart County that uses countywide polling gets this waiver <laughs> to law. <laughs> if you all have rotary ones. Oh, yes. In, the, in McClellan County, do y'all do countywide polling? You, know, you, you get the waiver, you're not printing your tape. And you don't have a number back. Fraud can waltz across Texas. There's a reason we have these laws. There's a reason why we're doing them in the order we're doing them. Again, the county clerk thinks the Secretary of State can tell her to ignore law. This is shocking. This is where we are in the state for the last 15 years. Okay. <coughs> this is our second issue in our election contest, which we were thrown out of court, and so we're challenging that. Can the Secretary of State suspend laws for which there's a criminal offense if you don't do it? It's a very simple question to the court, and we want them to weigh in on this. Is there any case law supporting that you have to have an election return before the stuff leaves the building? And there's yes. Back in 1911, there was, a, there was a Supreme Court case where this was brought up. And they said the returns together with the poll list and the tally list of the election shall be delivered to the clerk of the county court. And why do you do that? Because it must have occurred to any thoughtful mind that in the returns, the divvying up of the votes, made from the many boxes, which are the precincts, where both sides would ordinarily be represented, people are watching, right? And where their fidelity, their integrity, was to some extent assured by heavy penalties for any violation of duty. Still, we have a penalty of a criminal offense if you don't do it. 
This has been important for over 100 years in Texas. And the Secretary of State is waiving that requirement. So we believe we have case law on our side on this too. It's a criminal offense. So, have there been any examples where this has been a problem? Yes. Hayes County lost a memory card for which didn't have a take as a backup. 1,800 ballots were lost and never tallied in the 2016 presidential election. We held a meeting and we printed the names of every person who did not have their vote counted and we invited them to a meeting in Hayes County and look at their faces. Their names are on the list. We were taking pictures of their mother's name their neighbor and texting it to me. Your vote didn't count either. It gives me chills. The meeting was very powerful. Look at these faces. Okay? This is why this backup stuff is required. Oh, and then Hayes County says, oh, we tallied them later. We found the card. But no results changed. Whatever. I gotta believe that after the fact. This is why you need the results. Okay, third one. Watchers at Central County. Remember, there's one computer where all the memory cards come into. If nobody's watching, who knows what can happen there, right? So what how does the state handle watchers? How do the counties handle them? So remember, the memory cards come in, they get put into a card reader. They go into the main computer. You're supposed to have watchers watching the whole process. That's what the law allows. Very transparent. And if there's any error messages, you get it on what's called an audit log, a printer. It's connected to this main computer where the cards are coming in. And are there any security or corruption errors on that log? Wouldn't that be interesting to know? Okay, let's see about that. So let's go back. What does the law say about central? This is called central county. It's where all the stuff gets centrally counted. You have to have three people at central county to be operating. Number one, you've got to have a presiding judge that watches the tabulation supervisor on any activity at the county station. You have the manager of the Central County Station, which is typically the election administrator, and then you've got the tabulation supervisor who enters the data, enters the cards. These are three positions required by the law for people to be watching what's going on. All right? The tabulation supervisor is very important, and he is the he or she is the only person or their assistant they can use the equipment. All right, so it's not just any Tom, Dick, and Mary can come in there. So in our election, we were the first candidate in the country to get the audit log of the computer. And what we found was shocking. Come on in. We saw corrupt mobile ballot boxes, corrupt memory cards coming in. And actually, this was election day at about 12.30 around noon. The first card in was corrupted. You want to set up a program for backwriting and a hack, you want to be the first card in, right, to set it up. Interesting, the first card in was corrupted. More corrupt cards were added later. So this one's the most important. This corrupt card was number 603. We got the audit log for number 603 in our lawsuit, and what we found was really questionable. Mobile ballot box, memory card 603, was logged in, election was on 12, six, 12 um, 16. It was logged in on 1121 and then not logged out until 10 days later. Hmm. 10 or 11 days later. Where was that card for 11 days? Was it in the computer? Or did it leave and come back in? We don't know. It was a Duval County. No, it was Travis. <laughs> then we saw it again. Same card, correct card. Logged in on 12-1 and then logged out. 
Nine days later, 19 days, where was that car? This is a security issue. Where was that car? So we asked the judge, where's number 603? We'd like to have our expert witness analyze that car for what was corrupt. That's when we got thrown out of court and said it was a frivolous lawsuit. The judge said we could not get to this card in Lebanon. So that was very disappointing, yes. What was the amount of time that took place between asking the judge or, or, or presenting this before he gave the decision that this was a frivolous case? Did he have time to consult with someone else? Well, you know, there's weeks in okay, between. There's time there's weeks okay. in between. So, yeah. so that could have went further up than the judge. I have no evidence so. of any of that. Okay. What I do know is we had evidence of right. a so lot of issues. That just seems really <clears throat> we respectfully disagree with the judge on this. Right. So we had some serious concerns about the security of that corrupt card. But it looks to me, from my experience, this is where a program could have been entered and downloaded and set up that two-to-one program by person. And you saw that straight line of point with our square line. Okay? All right. So, interestingly, at the Central County computer, that was in 2014, now we know to put people there. We know to put people in the Central County station now. So what do we see today? So today, Travis County has corruption errors every election. We've documented it. We've seen it in all the laws. And they continue to do what they're doing. Actually, there is a, um, we'll go back. I'll get there in a second. So Watcher is entitled to watch everything that goes on in Central County. So I want to encourage you guys from other counties than Travis. I have counties all across the state that we've trained people for Central County. I would love to train your, your people for Central County. Okay, I will get you, can you can appoint two per county. I would love to, I, I do training all over the state now on this, okay? All right, let's keep going. So it's a misdemeanor, Class A misdemeanor to block a watcher. It's a Class A misdemeanor. Watchers have access to view everything that goes on. It's part of the law. So in Travis County, we've had some challenges with this. They're again not following law with regard to watchers. So we've had watchers for the last couple of years, last three years, They've done affidavits, and this was back in 2017 in the general election. Mr. Nelson, he documented that um, they were not letting him back to see the main computer. They were not letting him back there. And the presiding judge, you're only here for Central County, and that doesn't happen until 7 p.m. Well, do you saw the other law was like noon, they started doing stuff, right? And the presiding judge is saying, we're not doing anything until 7, and actually, we're going to leave. Um, she said, uh, we're leaving, the judges are leaving, won't be back till 6, and then we'll sign your paperwork and let you go, go in the back. And he says, you're preventing me from doing my job, and the election administrator says, no, we're not. Well, we got the audit logs of that election, and guess what? Mm -hmm. They were doing a ton of stuff before 7 o'clock, before they let the watchers in. 11-7. About 1.17, remember, this was at right before 1 o'clock. 1.17, they put a in early vote, past vote records, 322. And they're putting them in from multiple polling locations, about 1.15. Well, looks like Central County's open because they're processing some memory cards. Why aren't the poll watchers or the judges there to watch it? The presiding judge is supposed to have their butts there. But they're not there. They're not there. They can't see anything, right? So they're not there. 117, we've got corruption errors. And no judge is there to see it. No watchers are there to see it. Corruption errors every election. How are you supposed to handle corruption errors? This is the tally, part of your civic tally manual, that says if you have a corruption error, Remove the mobile ballot box and place it in a stack of invalid cards. You're supposed to quarantine it. You're not supposed to keep putting it in. You're not supposed to download the data. It gives you a choice. Do you want to accept it or not? And they push it through. 
The SOP says don't process it, quarantine it. They're not doing that. And we've highlighted this for three years and they continue to do it. So it's not like they don't understand. Interesting, at 1.30, they're printing the reports. So at 1.30, they know the results of early voting with nobody else around. Who else knows those results? It's way before 7 o'clock. The watchers are not here. This is a Class A misdemeanor offense to not allow the watchers what they're allowed to do. Around 6 o'clock, the presiding judge comes back. And they said at 6.40, y'all can go back there now. Well, a lot of stuff just happened, and they weren't back there. That's a problem. Okay. These are the counties where we have trained watchers at the Central County Station. If you want your county trained, let me know. My contact information is on that sheet, and I'm happy to do it. We, we, we're continuing to add to this list. We've got some really good counties. I'll give you an example. Lando County sees corruption errors. You know what they do? They quarantine the card. They go get their original equipment, download the data, and that's the SOP. Most counties do that because they're honest counties. We're not seeing that in trials. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes, sir? There was a slide uh, a few back where it showed the, uh, one of the first ones about the question errors. I thought I saw that on the picture ones. On what? Uh, yeah. Please go back. So here's one of the here's one of the corruption errors right here. Would they go back to the original one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, is this one see, it looks like the one circle for for 43. Is that the number of votes? No, that's a that's a code. That's a um, That's just an error code. That's an error code. It's just a it's a um, activity code. Yeah. We know what that code was. It, 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 it's related to this mobile ballot box um, ID. See this? They're all the same. Code 43, 43, 43. So the same thing's happening. Yeah, same thing's happening. And yet, they, would these be cards that then just kept being resubmitted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So these are the counties we've trained up. Watch it, watch. And uh, we've got some plans to submit this, these violations to the Secretary of State's office and see what happens. Because they're, these are criminal violations based on election code. Yes, sir. I've heard that the poll watchers, well, like you indicated, they weren't let in when there was things going on and other things, and where they don't, didn't want them to originally show them the, the computer. Uh, right. And it almost to the point of being bullied. That's right, exactly. Uh, and and our watchers, you know, you sued anybody over this No, we have not. Um, we're we're kind of we're trying to work with them to do the right thing, but they're not work doing the right thing. You know, we've um, some of the watchers years past have the counties told them, oh, we're not doing anything till seven o'clock, so they leave. And I'm like, no, get back here. And so now we have watchers that don't leave. And so there's no excuse for the county to say, well, they weren't there in the lobby when we came to get them. They were there the whole time. <coughs> We've done that now twice, and it's repeated. And so the Secretary of State has actually called Travis County, told them to stop doing it, and this last time they did it again. And they actually told the, the, one of the judges that they weren't doing anything, and they wouldn't let the judge know that they were back there. Now, that's a big problem. It seems like judges are part of the problem there. Well, the judges don't understand their power. Officials are breaking the law, and the judges aren't. The judges don't understand their power. 
They okay. don't. And so the part of the training is to train the presiding judge and the alternate judge. of Because uh, there's the parties. The parties, the Republican and Democrat Party, appoint these judges. But if they're not staying, the county, you know, you're, you're risking some problem because you don't have the people overseeing what needs to happen. Yes, sir. Hi. Since there's so few people in the room, I want to speak. I got a business session today. You have to be recognized as your people. My name is Michael Castain. Uh, I've been a libertarian since uh, the 1970s in high school. I became an inactive in that around 1982 and went off and had a career. Uh, I, parts of it were extremely successful. I live in Austin, Texas. Uh, I don't live in your district. I live over in six or seven yeah. uh, near the Arboretum. I'm in four. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is extremely concerning to me. I want to uh, our ask some more people because I don't know stats and, and go over, because these are explosive claims. Uh, and I'd like to spend a lot of time and money helping you with this if they check out. Well, I would, you know what, what I love is I go anywhere and I do a presentation anywhere, anybody asks me, I don't care if it's yeah. four, five, 20, 30, 100 people, um, to get the word out on what is really going on with our election system and, and, and get okay. people's help. So if you have a group of people you'd like me to come speak to, I would love to do it, or if you want me to come McLennan County or okay. anybody else, I would go anywhere. I, I, don't I go all over the state. I've given 200 presentations in the last two years okay. on this. Uh, how do you find the time to become an expert in physical chemistry, election law, digging up all this information, and uh, filing a lawsuit pro se? I guess that's a personal question, but uh, I'm, I'm this is my main thing I work on right now. Okay, I do. We're, 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 we're trying to. Uh, build funds for the case. We're, oh, well, we're, I, can, I can help you with that. I would bless you. All right, okay. we'll, we'll talk. Yeah. We'll talk. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> See, I don't have flash so this is where we are. Okay, so <laughs> we don't have numbered ballots, we don't have tapes, and we're not letting watchers in to the county office. It's amazing. Every check and balance is being ignored. Let's talk about partial manual counts. There's a statute. Remember, the paper ballots for absentee, they're numbered and they're hand marked and people turn them in to the county and mail them in. There's a code, chapter 127, that talks about the partial count of electronic voting system ballots. And I'm going to read this. To ensure the accuracy of the tabulation of the electronic voting system results, the paper systems, because the paper ballots are scanned, okay? To ensure those results are correct, the general custodian election records, which is the county, shall, shall conduct a manual count, a manual recount of all the races in at least 1% of the election precincts or in three precincts at minimum, which electronic voting system was used. Three precincts at least are supposed to be manually counted to make sure the scanners are working. In case there's a program on the scanners or there's a miscalibration. Do you have any more? Uh, I do. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's all I have. That's all I have. Um, to make sure there's either human error or technical error, right? That's what this is intended for. Well, guess what? Secretary of State has interpreted counties that use electronic voting machines are not subject to that law. And that makes no sense. So we've asked the Secretary of State, Christine Atkins, a lawyer, can you please reinterpret, you know, please read the law and, and we think that it means that all counties have to do these audits. And this is what she says. In the past, our office has interpreted this statute to me, that entities using DREs are completely exempt from the manual count, even if they have paper ballots that need to be audited. Bad idea. She says, we will not be changing that interpretation for the primary. However, we may reevaluate this interpretation going forward. So this means we might change our interpretation depending on the election. Mm. We may reevaluate going forward. Either the law is the law is the law, 
why would you change your interpretation depending on the election? Depends on who wins. This is very problematic. We want the audits. We're guaranteed the audits by the statute. So have there been any problems with these things in the past in Texas? The answer is yes. Hill County, they double scanned 1,700 ballots. An audit would have caught it before the canvas. Hood County, Granbury, Texas. This is Hillsboro. This is Granbury. I got reports from my watchers. They had to scan the paper ballots three times to get a consistent number. This is why the audit's in, in place. And there were many close races in the 18th primaries. Okay. So, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. And we're not doing this for any of the counties, the 200 counties that have electronic voting. You see a problem? How can we trust any elections in Texas if we don't have these backup records and we don't have these checks and balances that were promised to us by the election code? So what do we do? This is what the plan is. The numbering of ballot issue are cases in the Supreme Court. The tape issue is in the Supreme Court. Watchers in Central County, most counties do the right thing. And we're reporting to the Secretary of State what we consider these as being criminal violations. And we recommend that these reports go to the AG and get the AG to deal with it. Because the Secretary of State doesn't handle criminal violations, but the Attorney General does. So we're pursuing that. That's why we're doing affidavits. Signed statements and notarized. The partial manual counts. This really is up to the counties and us as voters to press our county to do the manual count, regardless of what the Secretary of State interprets. Paper ballot backup. All of the work we've done, even though our case is not through the Supreme Court yet, we've made a big impact on a paper ballot backup for Texas, which we've never had for the DREs, the electronic voting. I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm a Republican Party precinct chair, and I have been a delegate to our state convention for the Republican Party. And we got three new planks added to the Republican Party platform. And I want you to see these, so I want to plant the seed for you guys to have a similar planks in your platforms, okay? These are the three things we added to the Republican Party of Texas platform in 2016. We want to stay positive, right? We support the Secretary of State strictly enforcing printing of tapes for electronic voting for early and election day at polling locations after the poll is closed for all counties. This is targeting the Secretary of State. The Republican Party platform now says, we are not happy with what you're doing, Secretary. We want the tapes printed. The second thing we said, we support all means of protecting the integrity of our elections, including the optional use of paper. We want a paper ballot backup. The third thing we got added, we oppose countywide polling due to heightened potential for fraud. You can't track who's showing up, when they voted, whatever. We do not like countywide polling. It's convenient, but we don't like it because of security issues. So this is the first thing. So I want to plant the seed with y'all to consider this if you're delegates to your convention. I can be glad to give you links to this. And we can, if we had the Republican Party and the Libertarian, that would be great. Okay, second thing we've done. I have worked with a vendor called the ESNS on a new system where you put a piece of paper in and it's numbered the paper ballot's numbered. You pick your choices on the equipment, it prints it out, <coughs> you verify it, 
it's numbered, and you put that in a box and it gets scanned, you get an electronic result, and you have a paper document that's numbered to go back to for a recount. This is better than we have now. Is it perfect? No. But it's a huge improvement. There was a lawsuit by Hart InterCivic to prevent this from hitting the scenes in Texas. This happened last year. The Attorney General was asked for an opinion on these voting systems. Can they be used in Texas? Hart InterCivic sued the AG to keep the opinion from coming out. Eventually, they dropped the lawsuit. The opinion came out, and he said, yes, they may be used. So who's Hart InterCivic? Hart InterCivic is the vendor that uses the wheel. So, that, so they have a vested oh, okay. interest. They have vested interest. So they're yeah. competitors to these guys. Wow. They sued the AG for the, for the opinion not to come out. But it's about the money. They dropped the lawsuit. The opinion came out. We can have these systems now in Texas. This is the first time, guys, in the history of Texas in the last 18 years that we can have a paper backup. Okay? At the voting booth. This is amazing. Denton County is the, first, is the largest Texas county that's gone all paper. It was all electronic and now it's all paper because of all these issues. So we have a trend in Texas going back to a paper system. Travis County is getting this new paper system in the, for the 2020 election. It's going to be number ballot. So we've made a huge impact even though our case is not done yet. Okay? So Senator Bob Hall one of your, uh, my guy here was sitting here. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has just assigned a Senate committee on election security. And I'm helping that Senate committee. They're the first committee in the last 18 years who's dealing with electronic voting corruption in the state of Texas. <coughs> the Secretary of State's office last summer Try to get rid of the audit logs. Gosh, you can't have those around, can you? Showing those errors and stuff, when people are doing stuff. So we fought it. We had a hundred groups across the state, grassroots groups, who sent in emails and said, we don't want this to happen, and we want a public hearing on it. And any 25 people that send an email to the Secretary of State says you're about to do a change and we, we want to public hearing you get it. We had over 100 groups with all their members behind yeah. them. We don't want to get rid of the audit logs. They were trying to strike all of the events for messages, error messages, number of ballots, precincts, um, logging in. They wanted to get rid of the logs and we stopped it. It's amazing what's going on, guys, if we weren't watching. They also deleted the printed to in the first part. Huh? So, uh, shall I include a continuous speed printer and printed to? That's right. Uh, I mean, when we print it out on paper early, then either that paper disappears or it's like a record that is closer to the original uh, voter intent. That's right. And they wanted to delete the early uh, That's right. logs. And we prevented it. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we say we should challenge every election. I'll tell you one thing, I'm not ever going to run again in a, in a big election like this until the system's fixed. Right. Why would I? Knowing what I know. Yes, sir. When I ran for governor in 98, he had this form, he had to fill out about your donation stuff. So I, was, I was, could do it $30. Anyway, and it, I, was, I, I, was, I was reading the instructions, I was finding it out. He had his name for a notary. He didn't say he had to have a notary, so I didn't notarize it. I said, are you in? The guy called me and said, uh, Mr. Charlie, yeah. Uh, you didn't realize your form. I said, I read the instructions. Didn't say I had to. I'll get back to you. He said, Mr. Charlie, you're right. Yeah. So are you going to change the instructions? Are you tell all the other candidates not, they're not doing it? Neither. Neither. Yeah. He said, you must be the only one that read them. Well, I know. When you, it's, it's very powerful when you educate yourself on what the laws are. It's very powerful. Right? Yeah, so. so we we now we have, still have the audit logs. Thank goodness we have. Yes, sir. Yes, Governor haven't addressed any of these election things. I mean, isn't the Secretary of State appointed? Yes. And can 
the uh, governor remove something, one of his own appointments? The governor could do what he wants. He could sit Mr. Ingram down and say, cut this out. See, this is my big And it's not happened. The Pope thinks they put things in their platform, snigger, snigger, and then go off and ignore it. That's why you have grassroots who are saying no more. We're holding them accountable to it. Yes, sir. Do you have a group in Austin that doesn't have meetings? Can I come? Um, yes, let's talk. Okay. Let's talk. Okay. Let's talk. Okay, so this is really the big picture, guys. It's much better when we're organized <laughs> than when we're onesie twosies. And, and we've done this now. So we have groups all over the state. Um, grassroots Tea Party, Republican clubs, Libertarian groups, uh, Green Party. I presented to everybody. And we all agree we want honest elections. Just let the chips fall with who's the best candidate who got the most votes. And right now we can't be sure of who wins what because we don't have these backup records. And it's just like, just trust us. Go back to sleep, just trust us. I'm not doing that. Okay. So, our goal is true Texas elections. We have honest elections around the state. With these backup records and we follow all our laws, we're gonna have more. And I'm here to help any county or anybody. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Any county. Even Loving County? Even Loving County. Yeah, I've been to El Paso. I've been to, yes. Loving wow. County only has 40 people. I understand. 120 good yeah, yeah. They've got a, they got a county chair and they've got a, I bet they have paper ballots. <laughs> I bet they have paper ballots. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they have paper ballots. <laughs> I bet they have paper ballots. Huh? Yeah, in my county we have paper ballots. What county are you? Yeah. Yeah. 40,000. 20,000 live in one town, so yeah. I don't even have a county address and I live in the county because no real towns near me. <laughs> yeah. We have no incorporated cities. Yeah. No well, I'm here. I'm here to help. So you've got my contact information. I would love to help your campaign and our people in McLennan. We've not had anybody there yet. So okay. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Lord. 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 Lord.